In this video tutorial, I'm going to go through JDBC, which stands for Java Database Connectivity with MySQL. So this assumes that you have already gone through the MySQL tutorial where we install and run a few MySQL commands from client to browser directly, from client to the server. And also this assumes that you have set up your Maven, Java and Eclipse. So if you haven't set up your Maven, Java or Eclipse, you go to the videos and there are a lot of Java beginner video tutorials that will take you through step by step to set up Eclipse, Java and Maven. So JDB is a little bit more advanced level. So this assumes that you have done all these and also you have set up the MySQL as well. So that's in the MySQL database beginner video tutorial. So firstly, we looked at in the diagram before we created a client with the MySQL in the previous tutorial and then client was able to connect to the MySQL server and by doing so we set up a database called learn Java DB and also a table called account. So let me quickly recap that. So if I go to a browser, I have already run the environment command. So that's uh, that sets up the path so that we know that the MySQL database bin is in the path. So CLS to clear the screen again. And then in order to run the server, so you can see that this is the server. I had to run MySQL D, so which is under the bin file. You have a MySQL D.exe file. So you got to run MySQL D hyphen hyphen console. And this will automatically <coughs> This will start the MySQL server on port number 3306. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say MySQLD minus minus console. So it's starting the MySQL um, server and it has started and it's running on port 3306. Now I can start the client and I go to another DOS console and I type in MySQL minus U for user. I've already set up a user called user123 in the previous uh, MySQL tutorial. And then minus P for password. Okay, this MySQL. Okay, so it's complaining because it doesn't know where the MySQL program is sitting. So I just do control C. I run the environment. Okay, so it should be in the other one. I've already set it up. So I go to the other browser. It's already scripts. So I run the environment. Now clear screen. And I run the MySQL minus U for user. User123 and minus p hyphen p so mysql hyphen u user123 which i have already set it up and my hyphen p and it'll ask you for the password i put pwd123 which i have already set it up so now you get the mysql prompt so now any sql you type here is going to go via tcp ip and then you have the server listening on this port number 3306 and you can make all types of different CRUD operations. But what we are going to do in this tutorial with the JDBC is that the client is going to be a Java application and this Java application is going to make connection to the server, the MySQL server to the learn Java DB database and then perform some operations against the account table that we have already set it up in the previous tutorial. So this is this is where now when you are using from console from a client to client you are using MySQL there is no translation required. But if you are using a Java application and this Java application is going to talk to the database and then the results is going to come back as a result set back to the Java you need a translator in between to make the connection to send the SQL from Java layer to the database layer and then get the results from the database layer back to the Java layer. 
So this is where you need a driver. So if you are using a MySQL database, you need a MySQL driver. If you are using an Oracle database, you need an Oracle uh, database driver. So this driver is the one that is going to do the translation between the Java layer and the database layer. So we will look at that in a minute, how to bring the driver from a, via the pom.xml file from the Maven repository. Before we do that, let's see this learn Java DB and the account which we have already set it up. So I'm going to go into this client here. And then there are two ways. I can say use learn Java DB. Then database change it says. Then I can say describe account. So it tells you there's an account. Is we got ID, name, balance. ID is a watcher 30. Name is a watcher 50. Balance is float is a structure. I can also prefix it with learn java db dot account rather than saying use learn java db so if i want to see what the records that i have already inserted i can say select star from learn java db which is a prefix dot account and you had always finish it with semicolon otherwise it will say it will go into the multi-line mode and it expects more input from you. Here we go. So I can say select star from learn Java DB prefix that's a database dot account that's the table. Now you can see I have already have three records. One is ID one two three Jonah two hundred fifty five dollars, ID four five six Peter Smith thousand two hundred thirty four dollars, and ID seven eight nine Joanna six hundred seventy five dollars. So now we are able to connect via SQL and get the data back. Now we are going to use it via JDBC Java Database Connectivity from a Java application. So now the first step in doing is I am going to create a Maven project. So I am going to copy this and we are going to call this project the Simple Persistence. So I am going to go into this project folder. I am going to paste this. So you will see all these steps in the link provided below, below this tutorial, video tutorial. So this MVN Maven, we're saying archetype is generate minus B for batch mode. So you don't get uh, prompted with version numbers and things like that. It'll just complete it in one hit. And minus D is normally how you specify the properties via the Java thing. So group ID is com.mytutorial. Artifact ID is called simple Maven persistence. So I'm going to enter and it's going to build a skeleton maven project and if i go to my c projects folder c projects you will see simple persistence it has created a project just then so project is created the next step is go into eclipse and i'm going to import it as a maven project so i do file import existing maven projects next browse and select for under c projects the maven skeleton project you just created via the maven archetype command so go here you got simple persistence say okay and finish now we've got a simple maven persistence project and m says is a mavenized and j says is a java project and then here you can see it still is using Java to send edition 1.5 and also when you right click and properties and the compiler also says it is 1.5 version. So we will fix that through the pom.xml file. So the next step is the pom.xml file. So I am going to copy this in this step here. Control C. I am going to go back into my Eclipse. I am going to click on pom and double click it to enlarge it. So you're going to pom.xml file, I'm going to do control A and control V, I'm going to paste it. Now here, this is a standard Maven project, the group ID and artifact ID would have been already populated via the, the archetype commands that we pass as minus D arguments. And then I'm adding some properties here. See, I'm saying maven.compiler.source because I want to use 1.8 Java 8 and then also 1.8 Java 8. And also I'm saying Java version is 1.8. So these two are for the Maven 
and this is I'm saying this version is Java 1.8 now if I go still it says 1.5 I click on my simple hyphen persistence project right click maven select maven and then say update project and then say ok and maven is going to read this pom.xml file is going to update it now it is going to java 8 and also if i right click and click on properties and then say java compiler it's also 1.8 now so that's out of the way now we go in we bring in the standard junit 4.1 0.12 we are not going to do any unit test at the moment and this is where we're going to bring in the driver from so because I'm using MySQL I need the MySQL driver so I go to this group ID MySQL artifact ID MySQL hyphen connected at Java and version 6.06 .06. so I can see this MySQL I copy this group ID I go to this search.maven.org I type in G for group ID and then control V for MySQL which is a group ID. I go in here and then say MySQL connector Java and I go to this here again and I type A colon for artifact ID and press the artifact ID here. I go and search the Maven repository. So I can see MySQL, MySQL connector Java which the latest version is 6.06. .06. So that's what we are using here. So the my connector Java is required. So that's all you need for your JDBC. So this driver knows is an implementation of a JDBC. So JDBC is just an interface. And this a different vendor. So if you are a MySQL database vendor, you will be providing an implementation as a driver for the JDBC spec. Similarly, if you are Oracle database, Oracle database will be providing its own driver implementation for the JDBC spec. And if it is a Sybase, they'll be providing their own. So this is a typical example of an adapter design pattern. So in one of my interview questions and answers, I've specified why do proxy decorator, adapter, bridge, and facade design patterns look very similar because it is the way you use it will make it different. So the adapter pattern, the way you use adapter pattern is that if you write your client java code directly to either sybase or oracle driver what's going to happen you want to switch from one database to another it's not a simple decision that companies switch from one database to another but for whatever reason you want to say you start with sybase database and the thing are sybase licenses are very expensive and you want to move it to the mysql database you have done if you tightly couple all your Java code by directly writing to the uh, MySQL driver and using the API and uh, sorry Sybase driver and using the API and if you want to say you have about say 100 day or classes then making connection to a different tables like account orders and so on and then you want to change to a MySQL database you got to change all their code because the API is going to be different because Sybase might call it Sybase SQL um, database connection or whatever and then MySQL might call the API differently MySQL uh, database connection or whatever. So this is where the JDBC API comes in handy. So a JDBC API is an abstraction layer which defines the interface and then different vendors like Sybase and Oracle and MySQL, they provide their own drivers. So when you do a coding, you are just coding to the JDBC API. And then all you need to make sure is in the class path, you have the relevant driver. So if you're going to talk to the MySQL database, you make sure the MySQL database driver is in the class path. If you're using Sybase, you need to make sure Sybase is in the class path. And then your code is going to co be coded to only to the JDBC API. So when you switch database from one vendor to another, all you have to do is you remove that and make sure the other driver, whichever you're switching to, that driver is in the class path. So that's what basically we are doing here. We are bringing this in so that MySQL connector Java driver, because we are going to connect to the MySQL database, it's in the class path. So now if I double click on it, simplify it and go to the Maven dependencies, see the MySQL connector Java 
6.06 jar has been brought into my class path so if you go here it has all heaps of implementation so this implementation basically uses the JDBC interface so we can code to and then make sure that this driver is in the class path so once you do that then when you are making a connection from a Java client to the MySQL server this driver will make sure it does the connection uh, it translate from one um, the way the Java understands to the format when you send it across to the server the format that uh, server understands and when it takes a result set back when you do a select or something it has to send the result set back and it also get translated to the format that Java can understand so even though you, you are sending your requirements via SQL there are few translation has to be done between the Java layer and the database layer this is where the driver comes in handy and JDBC provides an abstraction so that when you switch your driver or databases it's easy enough and you don't have to really do too many changes to your client so they are basically in other words they are kind of make sure these are loosely coupled so now let's get to the next stage which is so we got the driver in and the POM file is set up so the next step is I'm going to create under the source main Java three packages so I'm going to select Commodore my tutorial right click on it new package and the first I'm going to call it a util this is where I'm going to write a util class so that it knows how to it uses the driver and it knows how to go and make a connection to the MySQL database so I'll create a util package where I'll be connecting the database util class then I right click on my com.mytutorial again new and I create a new package and in this case I'm going to call it a model so you need a model class so whenever you read something from the database uh, via the SQL uh, they come like a name value pairs and then I need to map that to a Java object and I can do whatever I want to do with a Java object so they basically map it to a POJO so I can print a POJO I can do whatever I want to do with it so that's called the dot model then you want a DAO layer DAO layer is for data access object layer so that's layer is where you'll be writing your SQL codes or inserts updates all kind of CRUD operations basically you performing via the DAO layer for the CRUD operations so I'm going to create a new package called file new package and com.mytutorial.dao and finally a main class that will be the bootstrap that will be the client standalone client class that will be starting and I'll be running so that will have the main method so I'm going to click on the com.mytutorial new package and I'm going to call it dot main and finish it so I've got all the packages that I need now I'm going to create the required classes within their respective packages so I'm going to go here look at the code so that's done so next is the driver package I'm going to copy this control C I go back to my Eclipse util so the next one is called the um, I'm going to call it the connection util because I'm going to make the connection so I'm going to go here right click on it new class I call it connection util so connection to the Java finish the class is created I'm going to do control A and control B and paste it now the connection util is ready so what basically it's doing this I'm creating a private static connection this is not the best way to do it but this is a simple tutorial so I would like to keep it simple um, in the future tutorial we will see how to create data sources how to create connection pools because creating and destroying connections can be quite expensive so you want to pull them uh, we will look at those details later on let's keep this tutorial um, simple so I need three parts to it first in order to connect I need a URL I need to know which host my, my SQL database server is what port number it's running on what's the name of the database is so you provide that through a URL so this URL is normally done via JDBC so it's called a Java database connectivity and because I'm using a database called MySQL so this is what it understands it through MySQL so it's JDBC colon MySQL colon forward slash 
local host because I'm running in my local machine so it's called the local host and it's running on port number 3306 so it's running on local host 3306 and the database I created is called learn Java DB so that's the database that we created learn Java DB so if I want to see what the databases are show databases here we go learn Java DB is what I've already created so we put the name of the database learn java db so under learn java db database you can have any number of tables so in this case i have one table called account but you can have as many tables as you want so that's basically the structure here learn java db and you have the account and that's a server that's running on then i need to provide the user and the password we have already set up the user as 123 password as pwd123 in the previous mysql um, tutorial the next step is to use a driver manager class is one of the classes provided by the Java SQL. So these all Java.SQL connection, Java.SQL driver manager, Java.SQL ex SQL exception. These are all basically the JDBC API um, classes. So I use a driver manager and say get connection and pass the URL user and the password to it. And this should really give me a connection and I return the connection back to whoever is calling it. So that's all this connection util does and then the next step is to go and create my model so i right click on it and it's called the account because i'm capturing the account data from the account table so i'm going to call it account so new class i'm going to call it account finish it and this is going to have basically three fields i'm going to work with rather than copying the whole lot i'm going to show, show you how to generate those getters and setters so i'm going to create this control v so it's complaining big decimal doesn't know anything about it because i don't have an import statement so all i have to do is control space or backslash and control space it says big decimal selected and automatically it has imported it now this general color squiggly thing is saying you have defined some variables but this is private because it's, this is called encapsulation so no one from outside can come and read those values and it's not being used here so now what i'm going to do is this is what the encapsulation is about you declare your variables as private and provide some public methods for the outside world like any other class that want to use this account to do and come and do a get or set or whatever so to do that I'm going to right click on it source and then so I say generate getters and setters and select all the fields I want to create a getters and setters for all the fields and that's it so you got the squiggly things are gone and I've got get and set methods for each one of those variables and also I'm going to right click on it source and then I'm going to generate two string method as well I need all the fields and they say okay two string is done then all I do is right click source and just do a format then my model is ready the counter Java is ready and the next step is to go and create the day of classes so they are firstly you need to code to interface so so first I'm going to create an account day as an interface so I go in here to my day package right click on it new interface I'm going to call it account deo finish it and then I'm going to provide this method in the account deo so I'm going to copy this control C I'm going to go here to control A and control V so I've got a method so interface is only defines a method it doesn't provide any implementation so all it is saying is get accounts method it doesn't take any parameters we'll go to the account table we'll make an sql call so it'll send the requirements through sql call and then it'll return a list of accounts so this is the account is the object that we created in the previous step there's a model and it'll create a list of account and now we need to provide an implementation so now here i'm going to go here right click on it new class i'm going to call it account deo impl 
and here is interfaces I'm going to add is going to implement the interface account Deo. this is in com.mytutorial.deo and I'm going to say OK and then finish it so now because I said interface it automatically provided a skeleton implementation of it because if you implement the account Deo, it has to override that particular method in it so which is get accounts which checks a list of account so which returns a list of account now I'm going to go here and then copy my implementation and paste it over this control C I'm going to do control A and control V and I'm going to go through this so basically what it is doing here is is creating a connection which is SQL connection which is null statement so every time you send something through SQL you need to create either a statement prepared statement and so on so statement is where you can execute and uh, select your query insert query update query delete query all these things so once you get a connection then you create a statement to send you SQL through so this um, statement can perform all types of CRUD operations and then what you get back is called the result set because database will send you all the accounts so that's a result set so I'm declaring basically these local variables here then I'm creating an empty list array list so that when I read through the data in the result set that has come back from the call I'm going to map I'm going to take I'm going to inspect each result and I'm going to create a new account object I'm going to store it into this list so that I can return the list back because this method returns a list of account now I'm going to the connection you remember that we already set up the connection util dot con connection so this connection util dot con connection is what is going to use this URI is going to this user and password and it's going to go to the SQL server and connect to make a connection to that server once a connection is made and we're going to use the statement to send our SQL query through so I'm going back into here so we get a connection object back and on the connection object we can create a statement so I'm creating a statement on that connection object so I'm assigning that to a variable called STMT which is an abbreviation for statement then I'm calling a method on statement called execute query and I'm passing an SQL query so this SQL query is all is doing it is select star from account because account is the table that we have already set it up how does it know which database to go to in the connection util we have already said is a learn Java DB and this is the host name and port number and this is the uh, like a protocol you can call it JDBC colon MySQL if it's an Oracle database it will be JDBC colon whatever the Oracle uh, database uh, prefix is then followed by the host port number and the database name and once it gets the result set you can loop through the result set it's like a you know you get a collection or something you for loop and you go through so you do rs dot next so it go through every record so if you have three records it will be going through this loop three times then I'm creating an empty account object this is our model that we have already created and then I'm saying this account dot set because we got setter methods on it then from the result set I'm saying get string and get me the ID and result set dot get string because I know that these two are varchar type so I'm doing a get string on those two get me the name and the other one is a float so I'm doing result set dot get float the balance once I get the balance then I'm converting to a big decimal because in our model it's of type big decimal then I'm setting to the my setting to my account object and so basically I'm doing through reading to the result set one by one the values that come from ID name and balance this ID name and balance are nothing but in the table so you have the ID name and balance and you got three records and that's what you're going to get back through here once I get it out of the result set I'm going to set it to my account which is the POJO plain old Java object set it and then add it to the list and at the end I'm returning the list from the method and here the catch is to catch any SQL exception so if you type in the um, table name incorrectly or the database server is not running or whatever then you'll be getting an SQL exception 
and it is important for to do the finally it is quite cumbersome i'm closing the result set here checking whether if it is null or not if it is not null i'm closing it checking the statement and closing it and the connection and closing it it is important that we need to close all those things otherwise you will have resource leak and when you have multiple clients connecting after a while you might run out of result set or statements or connections these are like a file handles they are very finite resources and as soon as you finish with them you need to make sure you close them but in the later tutorials you will see things like spring uh, when you work with Spring JDBC or whatever, it makes things your code much simpler. So Spring will automatically close the connections for you and you don't have to write this try catch finally and within finally another try catch and so on. So that's another benefit of using frameworks like Spring that takes care of these um, resource closing the resources for you. So that's all basically this code is doing and then we are returning the accounts now we have read everything from the result set we have assigned it to an account and we have put it into the accounts array list and then we can return it and then the final class we have to do is, is the client with the main method so then we can test everything after this so i copy this i go into my main package i'm going to say new class and this is called JDBC example just finish this and I'm going to do control A and control V I'm going to copy the code and let's go through quickly so this is basically a JDBC example as you can see there's a public static white main method the string arc is an entry point I'm creating an instance of my account Dio impl I can see you can you can see that I'm co um, coding to interface account Dao is an interface um, the variable I'm assigning to is called Dao which stands for data access object and new account Dao impl is my implementation we just saw which is doing all the um, select query via the statement is creating a connection statement and then passing it and getting a result set back and then mapping to a Java model object and then then I'm calling this get, get accounts method which just a select query and returns you a list of account which is a purely Java objects is mapped to. Then I'm just doing a system dot print line which will print all the accounts. The reason it prints all the accounts is that you have inside the accounts you have account object and in the account dot Java I have provided a two string method. So what it does is it got all these values and two it will automatically call the two string method and then two mistakes string method prints out the account and then say id is called id whatever the id it is name and the name whatever the name you get balance and whatever the balance you get so now we got all these um, set up now all i have to do is there are a number of ways to run it so first i'm going to show you run it within eclipse so within eclipse everything is there so you already have, I don't have to build anything. The Maven dependence are already in the class path. Uh, the way you know that it's in the class path is you can right click on it, properties, and then you go to Java build path. And then you can see this Maven dependencies in the library. You get the MySQL connect Java jar. And also you got 1.8 Java so that you can run your Java on the JVM. These libraries are there. Now all I have to do is go to this main this is where the main method entry point is right click on it and run as java application here we go it has run and you get this account this is the coming from the two string method because this first square bracket says is an array is a sorry it's a list because we have a list of three accounts so you can say first one is the account so there's basically coming from this account classes two string method um, so you got account here so minimizes again and maximize the console then saying one two three john r and balance 255 that's what we have here one two three john r 255 dollars and the next one again account comma is just to say this is one account object second one four five six peter smith and thousand two hundred thirty four four five six peter smith and thousand two hundred thirty four and then the third account is seven eight nine john joan r six seventy five 
789 Joanna 675 so what we have basically done is we have gone to the database server from a Java layer which is my example so my example is a main entry point that calls the Deo and then Deo gets the connection via the connection util class and then connection um, and then in the Deo class what we do is we read through the result set and map it to a Java Pojo model called the account and then in the um, main class we just print the list of pojos and we get the output so this is what typically you'll be doing when you're writing restful web service or whatever so you will be coming through instead of coming through a standalone thing you'll be coming through a spring mbc or whatever restful interface interface and they'll be going to the dao layer and dao will be getting the connection and it'll be going to the database executing an sql query it can be inserted it can be selected it can be whatever and if it is a select it'll be getting the data back and then it'll be mapping the data to an account object or something and that account object will have um, a JSON or XML converter that we have already seen in the Spring MVC RESTful web service and the RESTful web service will returning the value back to the browser so the idea is the same so now we have run it inside I will also quickly show how to run it outside so if I have to run it outside now firstly I need to build the jar file so I'm going to run this and say run as um, and maven install so it's building it then I go to a command line so I go to this command line and do CLS to clear so to run this I've already got a command here so I'm going to run Java I'll copy it and paste it to a um, notepad plus and explain this so it's easy it's a Java command so anything you run Java you're going to run Java hyphen CP stands for class path and then I'm saying my project is sitting in C project simple persistence inside target we have built simple persistence 1.0 snapshot dot Java so that's what we got it here inside the target folder once you build it inside the target folder you'll have simple persistence hyphen 1.0 snapshot dot jar but this snapshot dot jar will not have the driver jar because without the driver jar we cannot run it so I'll just show you this so I'm going to do this and I'm going to take this bit driver bit out um, I'm going to copy copy this take the driver and run it and show first to make sure it doesn't work so I've taken the driver path out so basically I'm saying Java CP simple persistence 1.0 snapshot jar and the com my tutorial main JDBC example is the entry point which has the main method so I'm going to copy this I'm going to paste it here then I'm going to run it here we go SQL exception no suitable driver found for JDBC MySQL whatever so it's complaints now I'm going to find because inside Eclipse it ran because my driver was in the class path it wasn't a problem now if you run it externally you want to run it take it to another machine and you want to run it or whatever so you need to have the driver so I go into my Maven dependencies so what the Maven does is when it brings it down it downloads that to the C Tools Home dot M2 repository. This is where my Maven repository is. So if you have seen my Maven tutorials before, I've gone through all these repositories, how Maven works and how it downloads and puts it into the repository. So I know the path where my MySQL connection Java jar is sitting. So now if I add that, so all I have to do is put my path to the jar where that I built my application this is my, my simple persistence jar and also I'm putting ctools home.m2 repository mysql sql connector jar this is where the, my connector jar is sitting so this is the driver and then I'm saying com my tutorial main jdbc example which is the entry point into the main method so now if I go and run this It has run and it has printed the same output. You got account ID one two three name John R balance account second one and third one. 
Now say if you have about 15 or 20 other dependencies, then you got to go all these things, you got to put semicolon one after the other, you can provide path and you get issues with what if the Maven repository moves, then you got to change and so on. So this is where the power of Uber jar comes into picture. So normally you can't have a jar within a jar, but there is a plugin called Shared Plugin. What it does is it unwraps every jar that you got in your dependencies and take all the packages inside the jar and builds one big jar. So if you look at this jar and then the size it has built, so you right click on it and say properties and check the size. Is 7,692 bytes, so it's roughly only about 7 kilobytes. It's only 7 kilobytes because it only contains the classes and the Java file that I built. So everything in the DAO, everything in main, everything in the uh, model and util. So only a few, few Java files and that's about 7 KB. Now what I'm going to do is I want the driver. So what I want to do is I want to package this driver inside everything in the driver class inside that simple persistent jar as well so i don't have to one by one i don't have to specify all the jar dependencies when i run it so in order to do that i go into my pom.xml file and then i'm going to add another snippet which is listed here so it's just all you need is this bit here when it's building it i'm adding a new plugin called maven shared plugin and this plugin gets kicked off during the phase of packaging. So what it's going to do is it's going to package all the artifacts that you have defined like the model and the interface, DAO interface and so on. And also it's going to go through all the dependencies that you have defined. And then it's going to take all the packages and classes and interfaces, whatever is inside that package and build a big jar file. So it's called the Uber jar. So I'm going to copy this bit and I'm going to put it into my POM file here. Right click and I'm going to do source format. Save this and I'm going to run this again. So we saw that the file before was only 7 kilobytes. Now I'm going to do run as and maven install. Now I'm going to go and inspect. So you can see it has built the original simple persistent jar file. So this is, would have been same as before. It would have been only 7 KB. If I go properties and look at it, see it's only a 7 kilobytes, same as before. But then it has built a simple persistent jar by including whatever is in here. That means all the interfaces and everything that you have defined under this project, plus the MySQL connected Java driver itself. So if I go and inspect the size of this, right click and say properties and look at the size, see it's about 2 megabytes now. Because that jar is itself is quite big and it has included that jar. Everything inside the package, everything in here will be included into the into this simple persistence jar. Now if I go and run it outside, I'll clear this again. So this is what we ran it. This is the one we ran before. All we have is Java command minus CP. This is for class path. Only the simple persistence 1.0 snapshot jar. And I didn't specify for the SQL, MySQL driver jar because that's already built. All those packages are built into this. Now if I run it, I get an output now. Say account ID 123, name John R, balance, account ID Peter and so on. So that's all for this tutorial and in the next tutorial I'll look at the concept of prepared statements. Uh, most of the time rather than statements you'll be writing prepared statements. They are safe from SQL injection attack and it's also more uh, performant because it caches those uh, query plans and then if you repeatedly run a particular query it will give you much better efficiency. And also I look into data sources. So when you're working in application servers, the application server will provide you a data source. So that's where you'll be configuring your database connectivity and the data source will be having a pool. So from the pool, you'll say every time, of, say you have a website, 100 users are coming in, each user will be using a connection from a pool. So it's basically like a 
cache for the connection so you don't uh, create a connection and then destroy it because it's quite um, um, it takes a little bit of resources to create those connections so you don't want to just uh, um, use it and then destroy it so you put it back into a pool once you're finished with it another user will come and get that connection and start uh, connecting to the database so we look at data so we will create a standalone data source and then standalone connection pool and we can use uh, an apache library to do a standalone connection pool but when you move to tomcat or any other high-end application server like um, websphere or oracle server or whatever though those servers come with a data source pool built in so all you have to do is you have to configure the data source and then you can use a jndi to connect to that uh, to get the connection details and then you go and connect to the actual uh, database so that's all for this uh, tutorial and there are all the links are provided below so if you want to go through step by step and you can uh, practice